Alrighty, here we go. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this program on the Medicare ABN forum. There's no audio taping or videotaping allowed and any unauthorized reproduction, dispensing, forwarding or copying of this target coding presentation is illegal. The information contained in this presentation is for educational purposes. It's not intended to be a substitute for your thorough clinical decision making. It's not intended to be legal advice. Target coding does not engage in providing legal services. Every attempt has been made to make certain that the information in this presentation is 100% accurate. However, it's not guaranteed. Just a little bit about myself before we get going here. My name is Dr. Marty Kotler. I am a chiropractor. I'm also a certified professional compliance officer. I also have a certification in CPT coding. My areas of expertise are in Medicare, compliance, compliant cash plans, treatment plans, chiropractic record keeping, CPT codes, and ICD-10 coding, and Medicare. I've written many books and training manuals on compliance and documentation. I write articles for chiropractic economics, dynamic chiropractic, the American chiropractor, many state association newsletters throughout the country. I'm a guest speaker at many state association conventions throughout the country. By the way, those of you that are part of your state association that's looking for a guest speaker, let us know. Might be able to work something out. All right, so here we go, the ABN form. ABN stands for Advanced Beneficiary Notice of Non-Coverage. That's the formal name of the form. And let's go through some of the key points before I show you the actual form and what it looks like filled out. So the ABN form is a mandatory notice. That means it's required that you must provide to a Medicare patient before providing a normally covered service by Medicare, but now it's not going to be covered. So the ABN form will let a patient know that this service, example, the only example in chiropractic where it becomes mandatory is with spinal manipulation. Let me repeat that. The ABN form is mandatory only for spinal manipulation because that's the only service covered by Medicare when performed by a chiropractor. So it's your job, it's your duty to inform a Medicare patient that they have reached a point where the spinal manipulation that you're about to perform is now not going to be covered anymore. That's why you need to give them the ABN form. And the most common reason for issuing an ABN is maintenance care. So the intent of the form is to notify a patient that Medicare is not going to pay, even though they might pay for it under a different circumstance. Let me explain that a little bit. When you perform a chiropractic adjustment, it could be for active treatment, which is medically necessary, which is payable and then you could perform a chiropractic a spinal adjustment for maintenance purposes. They're pretty similar. They may even be exactly the same treatment in your office, but when it's active treatment, it's covered. When it's maintenance, it's not covered. That's why I always say spinal manipulation is always a covered service in the Medicare program. It just, it's not payable when it becomes maintenance. So by giving the patient the ABN form before you are about to perform a chiropractic spinal adjustment, it allows them to make a decision whether or not they want it because they're going to have to pay for it out of pocket. So the only covered service performed by a chiropractor is spinal manipulation. And there are three CPT codes. You should be aware of these codes um, unless you're brand new to the chiropractic uh, profession. 98941, 9894, I'm sorry, 98940, which is a one to two region manipulation, 98941, three to four region manipulation, and 98942, which is a five region chiropractic adjustment. Now you're going to hear me interchange manipulation with adjustment. So, you know, to me, um, you know, I don't want to get into, you know, some chiropractors get a little sensitive. They don't like to call it a manipulation. And, uh, you know, some chiropractors don't like to use the word subluxation. Others, that's their main focus. I interchange the terms. Please understand this is for educational purposes. So you must issue an ABN when doing a chiropractic spinal adjustment on a patient when you expect it not to be covered. You have to have some genuine doubt. 
You're not supposed to just say, I hear this from a lot of staff members, you know what, Dr. Kotler? We, you know, we, we never know if Medicare is going to pay. Medicare drives us crazy. We, we just have the patient sign an ABN on, on every visit, even on the first visit. N no, that will invalidate it. Um, and you're prohibited from obtaining uh, blank um, ABN forms um, and, you know, filling them out in advance. You have to go over the form with the patient. Once it's completely filled out, you keep the original, give a copy to the patient. If you don't issue a valid ABN, you're not supposed to, well, you're not going to be able to take money from the patient. If it's an invalid ABN, you didn't fill it out properly, you didn't use it properly, you cannot take money from the patient. I've seen that happen many times. You could use an ABN as a voluntary notice about non-covered services like exams. We're going to get into detail on that. But an ABN is not required to bill a Medicare patient for a service that's not covered by Medicare. So the ABN form should be kept on file for five years. You could issue a single ABN that over an extended course, usually one year, an ABN is good uh, for up to one year, but I typically like the ABN getting signed. If a patient is coming in for chiropractic wellness care once a month, let's say, I would recommend you get that signed on every visit but it's good for one year. The ABN must be signed, completely filled out in order for you to collect cash from the patient. By using the AT modifier with the spinal CMT code, you are telling Medicare that you believe the service is medically necessary. You see that those two little letters, AT, that tells Medicare a lot. It tells Medicare that you know the Medicare guidelines, you've read them, you've trained your staff on them, they know what the AT modifier means, they know what active treatment means. So those two little letters, A and T, means a lot. It means the care is medically necessary and you could prove it in your notes. So please get familiar with the Medicare guidelines. Those of you that are members of Target Coding, you know you could contact us and we will get you the Medicare guidelines for your state. We'll get them specifically for your location. Now, you may or may not need to use ABNs with Medicare Advantage plans. If you are getting patients coming in with Medicare Advantage plans, this is a patient that has opted out of traditional Medicare Part B, and they've signed up for what I call a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, if you're not sure what the rules and guidelines are for the Medicare Advantage plans, then you're better off just following the same guidelines you would use for a regular Medicare Part B. Now, this is a little bit tricky here, active treatment versus maintenance care. This is where Medicare and doctors of chiropractic get confused. A lot of chiropractors are treating patients and billing Medicare as though it's active treatment but the notes look like it's maintenance care. And this is one of the common causes for uh, Medicare to ask for money back from doctors. So according to Medicare, active treatment means the, patient, um, the patient's condition is considered acute when the patient is being treated by a new injury. So active treatment could be acute or chronic. So acute is when the patient is being treated for a new injury. Chronic is when the patient's condition is considered when it's not expected to completely resolve, but your continued therapy will result in improvement, functional improvement. That's the key. Once the patient has remained stable for a given period of time, then chiropractic care is considered maintenance and not covered. So remain stable, you know, that's a little open-ended, that's a little vague. You have to decide on your own how many visits you think it takes for a patient to remain stable, in my opinion, uh, two to three visits. Maintenance care is not covered by Medicare, according to Medicare. Now, when, you, when I read this to you, you might say, wow, that sounds like a good thing. Um, it's not covered? No. See, maintenance care, according to Medicare, includes services that seek to prevent disease, promote health, enhance the quality of life, prevent deterioration, you would think, wow, that sounds like a good thing. Well, it's not covered. Chiropractic maintenance care is not covered by Medicare. Okay, now let's get into the actual form. So 
Um, if you're looking for the complete instructions on the ABN form, you know, it's kind of funny. The ABN form is a one-page form, right? Well, it has a 39-page instruction manual, uh, so to speak. So if you're interested in learning the deep, deep concepts of the ABN form, you would go to the Medicare Claims Processing Manual, Chapter 30, Section 50. If you want to take a, if you're not familiar with the form at all and you want to go get one, you could just Google ABN form, Medicare ABN form, and this is what you see. This is what you'll get. You can get it for free. This is the form. There are 10 customizable areas labeled A through J. Areas A through F, you can complete before you even give the form to the patient. Area G, which is the option box, that must be completed by the patient. Area I is where the patient signs it. Obviously, the patient must sign the form. And area J is where the date would go in. So before we get to the mandatory use of the ABN form, which would be when? When the patient reaches wellness or maintenance? Not on the first visit, right? So let's go through the first visit. On the very first visit, this is what I would recommend you use. You don't have to use this form. You could use an ABN form if you want for the exams and the x-rays and the therapies, the non-covered services. I like this better. This is a form that says, Medicare doesn't pay for all the services provided in this office. Medicare only, cover, only covers spinal manipulation by a chiropractor. The below services are not payable under Medicare when performed by a chiropractor. Exams, x-rays, laser, orthotics, surface EMG, vitamins, lumbar braces. And the patient has to sign the acknowledgement form at the bottom, agree to it that they acknowledge, they've been told in advance, they agree to pay, they had time to ask questions, they're signing it voluntarily, they have the right to refuse care, and they understand they're fully responsible. Now, the patient says, okay, they sign the form. Now, you have the option. You could bill Medicare for the exam. If the patient has a secondary or supplemental, they just ask you. Or if they don't have a secondary or supplemental that'll pay for exams, x-rays, and therapies, you don't have to submit the bill to Medicare at all. So now, if you want to use an ABN form for the very first visit for the exams, x-rays, and therapies, this is the way it would look. I find this confusing. I find the typical Medicare patient coming in that may be going to other doctors, like my mom, she goes to doctors. Every doctor she goes to, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, every doctor she goes to is participating with Medicare. And um, my mom has AARP, and the doctors accept AARP for this 20% that Medicare doesn't cover. So every doctor she goes to, she doesn't pay anything. That's the way it is. Um, so if she came to your office and you gave her this form and told her she had to pay for the exams and x-rays, she would probably be confused. She could afford it. She has the money to pay for it. She would just be confused. Wait, I don't understand. Every doctor I go to doesn't ask me for money. So this form could be a little overwhelming and confusing, but if you want to use it, that's fine. The, the re a couple of reasons why I don't like it. Number one, it's confusing. Number two, if the patient does have a secondary that'll pick up the exam and x-rays, what happens if the patient checks option two? It says, I want the chiropractic non-covered services, but do not bill Medicare. So now the patient is telling you, don't bill Medicare for the exams and x-rays when they have insurance that'll pay for it. It'll be confusing. The patient's not going to get it. But if you want to use an ABN on the very first visit for the exams and x-rays, you can, as you may have noticed or may not have noticed, Spinal manipulation is not on this form, and it's not on this form, because that's a covered service. Now, when the patient gets to the point, okay, so let's take a scenario. Um, Mary is coming in. She's your patient. She, Let's say she's come in for, I don't know, it's her 14th visit, and that's the breakthrough visit where she goes, wow, I'm feeling a lot better. And then you treat her a couple of times, and you feel she's, became, she's become stable. Um, she's reached maximum therapeutic benefit. Um, she tells you she can bend and lift better. She's sleeping through the night better. She filled out an outcome assessment form. She's improving. She's doing very well. Give her the opportunity to say, hey, Mary, when you come in on your next visit, if you're still doing really well, I need to talk to you about maintenance care. It's not covered by Medicare. Okay, we'll see you on your next visit. Walk into the room. Next visit, she's doing great. 
this is where you have to explain the situation. You or a staff member would have to say, okay, Mary, um, good news and bad news. Good news is you've reached maximum therapeutic benefit. You've reached wellness care. The bad news is Medicare doesn't cover wellness or maintenance care. So would you like to continue to come in? You'll have to pay out of pocket and um, Medicare will not cover it. I just want to make sure you're clear on that. We recommend you continue to come in about once a month for you know, a little tune-up oil change that's not covered by Medicare. Would you like to do that? If the patient says yes, then go get the form, and this is how it would get filled out. You see it on your screen, your name, address, phone number across the top, patient's name, everything in green you would have to fill in. The service, chiropractic manipulation, reason Medicare may not pay. Medicare doesn't pay for chiropractic maintenance care and you need to put in the fee you can put in a range if you would like and now the patient has to choose an option option one I want the chiropractic maintenance care you may ask to be paid now but I also want you to bill Medicare hmm okay option two I want the chiropractic maintenance care but do not bill Medicare mm, I like that one better so if the patient checks option one you are required to bill Medicare but what are you going to do differently? You're going to take off the AT modifier, replace it with GA. Now that goes into Medicare. Medicare will deny it, and it'll come back as a PR remark code, patient responsibility. If they check option two, that's nice. You don't have to bill Medicare. Now you have a true cash patient. Isn't that what we all want, right? We want cash patients. We want patients to come in, lie down on the table, get a great chiropractic visit, you want the patient to get up, pay you cash, and leave, right? That's the ideal situation. You could have that with Medicare patients. Now, if you're non-PAR, not accepting assignment, you should update the form so it looks like this. Uh, in option one, cross out that last line, and then in additional information, put in, this provider does not accept assignment from Medicare for the items listed above. If I checked option one above, I am responsible for paying this provider's charge for the item provided. If Medicare does pay, Medicare will pay me, the patient, the Medicare approved amount for the item listed above, and this payment may be less than the provider's charge. You see, that's for non-PAR, not accepting assignment providers that may charge more for a wellness adjustment than the Medicare fee schedule. So there's a nice little form. This was a pretty recent update to the Medicare uh, ABN form for providers that are non-PAR, not accepting assignment. Now here's another form that uh, we put together for our clients, but everybody could have it if you want. Um, here it is on your screen. You may have patients coming in with a Medicare Advantage plan and you're not participating in that plan, then this is a little bit of a different form that you should use. Basically says we don't participate with your Medicare Advantage plan. You're responsible to pay for all the services listed uh, on this form. Now, another thing that comes up is, um, you know, patients, um, well, Medicare patients can get into car accidents, right? And sometimes the attorney or the patient says, well, my PIP benefits have been exhausted, no more med pay, no more insurance through State Farm, Geico, Allstate. And then the patient or the attorney says, well, bill Medicare. Hmm, okay. So in box 10, it says, is patient's condition related to employment, auto accident, other accident? Here's a larger view of the box. Is patient's condition related to employment? No. Auto accident? Yes. You must check yes if you're going to bill Medicare for an auto accident. Medicare needs to know that there's another insurance company involved. It even says it on the form and um, if you look in box 11D it says is there another health plan? You have to check yes and put the Geico Allstate State Farm insurance information on the form and say, yes, this condition was related to the accident. Now, Medicare says, well, you know, we're precluded from making payments where payment has been made or can be expected from a regular health insurance, a PI, no fault, or work comp. Medicare is not permitted to make payment for such associated claims unless all other insurance plans have been exhausted. All claims must first go to the liability insurance company. All righty, let's talk a little bit about compliance, Medicare compliance, also known as OIG compliance, policies and procedures.
But actually, before we get to that, let me ask you a couple of questions. Can you treat Medicare patients without being enrolled in the Medicare program? The answer is no. If you are not enrolled in the Medicare program, if you haven't billed Medicare in a few years, you're not sure if you have a Medicare number or you've never had a Medicare number and you're telling patients, come on in, just lie down, Mrs. Smith. I'll adjust you. I'm not in Medicare. Just pay me cash. Or Mr. Jones, come on in. You know, we really don't deal with Medicare. Our normal fee is $40 a visit. We're not going to bill Medicare. Lie down. Let me adjust your spine. And the patients are coming in and paying you. That's illegal. You cannot treat Medicare patients unless you're enrolled in the Medicare program. Can you collect cash from Medicare patients without billing Medicare? Yes, I just went through that scenario. Patient gets to wellness and they check option two on the ABN form. Terrific. Can chiropractors opt out of Medicare? The answer is no, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it. Opting out is a private contract. Chiropractors are not on the list of providers that can opt out. Now, whenever I bring this up, I get a lot of confusion. You know, when I do my live seminars, um, doctors are raising their hand, staff are raising their hand. What? I don't understand. What are you doing? I thought chiropractors can opt out. I thought we can take cash. So in order to just set things straight, here we go. Um, if you want the official um, statute that you cannot opt out of Medicare. It's in the Medicare Benefit Policy Manual, Chapter 15, Section 40.4. And here's another document in the bottom right corner that says doctors of chiropractic may not opt out of Medicare. This is right from Medicare. So when sometimes I say something and, and, and providers go, well, I heard differently here, I heard differently there, or I don't think that's right, that's fine. I don't mind being challenged. I don't mind being questioned. So what I do is I get the, the source. This is right from Medicare. It says chiropractors may not opt out of Medicare, noting that opting out and being non-par are not the same things. Chiropractors may decide to be par or non-par, but they may not opt out. Now, just to take it another step further, if you're not enrolled in the Medicare program and you're just saying, hey, Mrs. Smith, come on in, sign the ABN form, I'm not in Medicare, just, you know, come on in and we're just going to, you know, charge you cash. You cannot do that. Chiropractors not enrolled in the Medicare program, you're not allowed to use an ABN form. You cannot use an ABN form if you are not enrolled in the Medicare program. It's like you're using Medicare's property without their consent. So, again, if you want to dig a little deeper into this, if you're not sure, if you're hearing this for the first time, do a little research. Go to the Medicare Claims Processing Manual, Chapter 30, Section 50.3. So back to OIG, which is the letters for Office of Inspector General. Their job is to protect the integrity of federally funded programs. The OIG oversees making sure criminals aren't ripping off the Medicare program, Medicaid program, all the federally funded programs. So chiropractic is a covered service in the Medicare program. That's why the OIG looks at chiropractic to see how we're doing. And they come out with reports every few months or a couple of times a year. This one was, mm, I don't know, um, a few months ago. This uh, chiropractor from Brooklyn collected a lot of money. The average chiropractor collects about $17,000 a year from Medicare. Um, this chiropractor collected over $300,000 in one year. So Medicare thought that was a little bit excessive, so they looked into his practice. And there was another report here that says, you know, we don't think chiropractors are documenting properly. So Medicare wants providers to be proactive. What does that mean? Well, an example would be having formal staff trainings. That means document them in training logs. And it's required. It's not even really an option here. <laughs> if you see Medicare patients, a Medicare billing and coding policy manual, compliance manual is mandatory. Staff want it. And we work with hundreds and hundreds of CAs across the country. They want organization. They want leadership. They want to work in an ethical and trustworthy environment. That's what a billing policy can help accomplish. 
and you have an insurance company um, breathing down your neck or you're involved in a state board complaint, a policy manual can prevent audits, it could mitigate fines and penalties, and for the doctor, you create it, you customize it. It's like going to a, you know, a, a place to, to get a suit. You, you, it's a custom-made design suit versus one off the rack. So you want to put together an example. Do you have a policy on full spine adjusting, but you only bill 98940? So a compliance plan is based on these seven essentials. You may have seen these in the past. And you're supposed to have policies and procedures. This is our list of policies and procedures. If you want to get a Medicare compliance manual from us, let us know. It's pretty simple. It's effective. It doesn't take long to implement. It's about 40 pages. It's not overwhelming. You're supposed to do an internal chart review. Yeah, Medicare requires you to do internal reviews. How often? Not often. Maybe once or twice a year. You're supposed to go to the Medicare exclusions list to see if you or anybody in your office are excluded from the Medicare program. Go to the website you see on your screen, exclusions.oig.hhs.gov. Put your name in. Hopefully, it won't pop up as being excluded. You're supposed to have policies on what you do. You have an open adjusting room. Talk about it. You adjust uh, full spine, but you only bill 98940. Why? Explain it. Time-based codes? Yeah, explain what you use in order to justify billing time-based codes. So my recommendation is read the policies from the health plans you bill. Review with staff. Log them into your policy and procedure manual. Attend seminars, webinars, watch videos, read books. Policy manual can prevent audits. So we offer one here. It includes policies, procedures, the HIPAA notice form, training logs, chart review tool. Sample ABNs are provided. We talk about the $75 rule as far as what you can give away for free prompt pay discounts. What's normally $795? Oh, that should be $795. Well, if you see this and you sign up for it, then you'll get the $595 fee. It's already gone up to $795. We have to update that. So just a quick note here, the difference between Medicare and HIPAA compliance, the purpose of Medicare is to prevent billing and coding errors. The main purpose of HIPAA is to protect patient health information. So HIPAA applies to covered entities. Are you a covered entity? Let me ask you two questions. Are you a covered entity? Question number one, do you bill or receive payment from insurance companies? If you answer yes, you're a covered entity. Number two, do you submit claims electronically? If yes, you are a covered entity. Now, if you answered no to both, maybe you don't have to abide by all the HIPAA rules. Maybe you say, well, I'm a cash practice. Everything's in the cloud. I don't even use a computer. I don't have any employees. Contact us. We'll let you know. We'll have a complimentary consultation. We'll let you know if you are required to be HIPAA compliant. So. Back to the ABN form. You want to be um, proactive. That means Medicare expects you to know what's going on. Medicare wants you, uh, Medicare and, and your state boards expect you to know. <clears throat> so just a few um, closing comments here. Get the ABN form. Read the manual. Make sure you're using it properly. Have staff meetings. Read your Medicare local coverage determinations. Attend seminars. Just a few other closing comments, and then we'll get to questions and answers. Please check with all the carries you bill prior to submitting claims. Target coding does not guarantee that this information will guarantee payment from an insurance company or a patient. You know the rules change all the time, so please stay on top of the rules. Go to seminars, webinars, join your national and state professional associations. Here's our contact information. Email is info at targetcoding.com, website targetcoding.com, telephone number 1-800-270-7044. Our fax number is 1-844-831-2347. All righty, let's see. Oh, okay, so here's, um, here's our Medicare 
compliance manual information. Here's our HIPAA program. The HIPAA program is very comprehensive. Shop around. If you're shopping around for HIPAA compliance programs, make sure you compare ours to the others. They're all different. Ours is cloud-based and you get everything digital. You get a comprehensive risk analysis with detailed report. We have training videos for staff and doctors. We have compliance testing with certificates of completion. We help track your business associates. The HIPAA compliance program includes, for a limited time, the Medicare and General Billing and Coding Policy Procedure Manual. We also do acupuncture billing and coding policy and procedure manuals and we have an acupuncture webinar actually coming up in uh, two weeks on Thursday, January 25th. We have an acupuncture webinar. It's from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to go through the acupuncture codes in detail. We're going to go over the 15-minute increments versus the 8-minute rule. They're different. Um, if you're familiar with the acupuncture codes, they are 15-minute time-based codes, but it's different than the ultrasound and the rehab 8- to 22-minute rule. How to bill for office visits on the same day as acupuncture. We're going to provide sample acupuncture soap notes. The fee is $149. No CE credits, I'm sorry, at the present time. We don't have CE credits for acupuncture webinar, but we will down the road, I think. Um, so the 149 includes the live and the recorded webinar. So if you can't make the live, you'll get the recording sent to you. Even if you watch the live in full, we're still going to send you the recorded so you could show it to your staff. So you could visit our website for more information. We also have a very good book. This is our best-selling book. It's the book on the best chiropractic ICD-10 and CPT codes to improve reimbursement. It has really good stuff in it. Um, this is one section that everybody loves. If you're going to diagnose a patient, let's say, look at the third one down. Let's say you're going to diagnose a patient with cervical radiculopathy. You should have some ortho, neuro, chiro tests to justify it. You need to justify every diagnosis you come up with. So cervical radiculopathy, do a little Jackson compression, Valsalva, do a couple of ortho tests, neuro tests, check for myotomal weakness, limited range of motion. So for about, uh, there's a whole bunch of diagnosis codes we have in the book, and we give you the ortho, neuro, chiro test to justify it. Also, we have an FAQ section. These are the questions I've gathered over the years. For example, what's the difference between a disc disorder and a disc displacement? What's the difference between cervical brachial syndrome and cervical radiculitis? What's myelopathy versus radiculopathy? What's the difference between myalgia, myositis, myofasciitis? Book also has the diagnosis codes that pay for the most visits, also known as long-term treatment diagnosis codes. And we also go through how to pair your codes. For example, if you're billing 97110, what are the best diagnosis codes to link with that CPT code. It's all in the book. And we do seminars all over the country, webinars. We offer memberships. This is our basic membership. You can stop and start at any time. It's $99 a month. And it includes our live webinars. Later today, I'm doing a webinar. It's a two hour webinar with CE credits. It's normally $129. If you're a member of the basic membership, it's included for free. So you may want to consider that. We also have a gold and platinum membership. So here's our contact information again, info at targetcoding.com, website targetcoding.com, telephone number 1-800-270-7044, HIPAA secure fax number is 844-831-2347. I want to thank everybody for attending. I hope you learned a lot.